Hello everyone. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to create a website navigation menu that's responsive. Now the word responsive in this context means that we want to use the best layout depending on the size of the user's device or browser window. So for example, if someone's using a traditional monitor or a laptop or a large tablet, then the layout in front of us makes sense for a navigation menu. But once someone is using a smartphone, which is only about this size, we can see that the navigation is taking up too much of the important screen real estate. So instead, and I'm gonna switch over to a new tab with new code, instead what we want is something that uses horizontal navigation on larger devices, but for smartphones, we wanna have a menu that you tap or click and then reveal the navigation. So this way on initial page load, our main content is still in prime viewing space for all users. So in this video, we're going to review the JavaScript and CSS. We're gonna write it by hand so that you can create this navigation yourself. So let's dive right in. Now, this was the final product, but I'm gonna switch over to the version without any of the responsive code so we can write it together. So let's review what we do have at the moment. We have a div with a class of nav menu and we're using the standard structure of an unordered list with list items for our links. In the CSS, we've simply floated the list items to the left to create the horizontal layout. So that's what we currently have. Now, let's review a plan of attack for adding in the responsive styling and behavior. So it's a two-step process. Step one is the CSS. We're gonna target the way that this navigation looks on small screens so that each link sits on its own line and has more space around it so it's easier to tap. Step two is the JavaScript. We're going to hide the navigation initially for small screens and then we're gonna set up the event handling so that when we click on something, then it slides down the navigation. So let's begin with step one, the CSS. So we want the new CSS that we're going to add uh, to only take a place if the screen is about this size, but not when it's this size. So I'm going to add a new line in our CSS file, media, screen, and max width 480 pixels. So now whenever the browser window or the device is smaller than or equal to 480 pixels, any styles we place between this bracket and this bracket will be applied to the layout. So let's write the CSS so that the links sit one per line instead of stacking horizontally. So we'll say div nav menu, unordered list, list item, float none. So now if we refresh, we see that we have one per line. Let's go ahead and add a faint border to the bottom of each link. So we'll create a new declaration, border bottom, two pixels solid, and then I'm just gonna paste in a slightly darker blue color. So now if we refresh, we see that we have a very subtle border. Let's go ahead and set it up so that this last link, the final item, does not have the border. So we'll create a new rule, nav menu, and we can use this pseudo selector named last child, and that will select only the last link or the last list item. And then we can say border bottom none. If we refresh, we see that now it's gone. So now that the navigation menu itself is styled correctly, Let's add the menu trigger button that we tap to reveal the nav. So in our HTML, we'll create this trigger element directly above the menu itself. Uh, we'll give a class of menu trigger. We'll include the word menu inside it. So now if we refresh, we see that the word menu is directly above the navigation. And you'll notice that even if we make our browser larger, that word is still there, menu. And we do not want that. We only want it to show for small screens. So in our CSS, we'll create a rule directly above our media query, as this will target larger screens, or actually all screens, and we'll say menu trigger display none. So now if we refresh, it's gone, but that means that it's gone everywhere. So then inside this media query for small screens, now we'll say menu trigger display block. So now we have something that does not display for large screens and does display for small screens. So now our next step is to add CSS so that the navigation menu does not display at all for small screens. And then we'll use JavaScript so that if you click this menu trigger, then it reveals. 
So we'll hide the navigation menu entirely for small screens. Okay, and now we're going to write a bit of JavaScript within our script file. We're using the popular JavaScript library named jQuery. Anything we place between this bracket and this bracket will run on page load and we'll have access to all of jQuery's neat functions. So we'll say jQuery. When the menu trigger element is clicked, run a bit of code. So any code now between this bracket and this bracket will run when we tap that menu text. So now we will select the navigation menu and use jQuery's slide toggle method. And it's that easy. So now if we refresh and we click the menu button or if we tapped it on a smartphone, it reveals the navigation. And if we tap the menu button again, it hides it. So that's what the word toggle here is doing for us. It's toggling between slide down and slide up automatically. So our responsive navigation is now almost complete. But there's one last thing I want to do to make it bulletproof. So currently, if we click to reveal the navigation and then click to hide it and then make our browser window larger to use the traditional layout, we can see that the navigation is still missing. And that doesn't make sense. We want the navigation to always show for larger screen sizes. Now to fix this issue, all we need to do is run a bit of custom code alongside this slide toggle method. So we'll say take 400 milliseconds to complete the slide toggle. And then when it's done, run this callback function. So now anything we place between this bracket and this bracket will fire when this slide toggle is finished. So what we want to do now is basically toggle another class so that only the mobile hides the navigation, but the desktop never tries to hide it. So we will select the navigation and then we will toggle the class. We could use any name we want. I'm going to use nav expanded. Then we also want to chain on another method here called CSS. And we want to make sure that jQuery, after it completes the toggle, then it sort of offsets or removes any CSS that it used inline. So we'll just select the display property and set its value to empty. So this way, we can use our CSS and our media queries to control different code at different screen sizes. So now if we hop over to our CSS, oops, first I want to call out this class, nav expanded. We just need to go add a rule in our CSS for nav expanded within the media query for small screens. So we'll say div nav expanded display block. So now if we refresh, we go to the mobile level, we show the navigation, we hide the navigation, and then we make our screen larger again, we can see that the nav is still there. So now everything is in place and our menu is complete. Although I suppose we could style this menu trigger a bit. So I'll just paste in some code that I wrote earlier. Basically, we're just adding a background color and a color and a bit of padding so that it looks something like this instead. So this is the final product. To review, we used CSS, media queries, and a little bit of JavaScript and jQuery to create a responsive navigation menu that works for all devices. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more web development tutorials. Thanks. Bye.